welcomed the most anticipated rerun in Genshin history, 3.4's second half. One of my favorite characters of all time, Yelon, is making a return alongside the lovely Hu Tao, sporting not only one of the most satisfying playstyles used in Overworld and Abyss, but also universal meta usage on nearly every team comp that uses Hydro imaginable. There's a reason so many come to covet Yelon for themselves, even if they already have Xing Chou. YouTube Frogs, welcome to an updated 3.4 Yellen guide covering the most essential information you'll need to tie up your enemies and make them yours. We'll be covering her talents, attack rotation, optimal weapons and artifacts, constellations, and team comps alongside a gameplay showcase. Let's begin. From C0 to C5, Yelon's focus is a pure HP scaling off-field Hydro Burst DPS with consistent Hydro application. C6 adds front-loaded AoE Hydro DPS fired from her normal attacks after burst activation. Prior to Samaru and the release of Dendro, her gameplay was primarily utilized in vaporized situations, but now she has found a spot in common Bloom-related compositions as well. Given her versatility with team comps and how good she looks, players will often prioritize using her even if they don't need to. The focus of her kit centers around her elemental burst. Consistent burst damage and per second hydro application alongside a ramping damage percent passive from her ascension 4. Elemental skill is responsible for extra damage, consistent particle generation, and a speedy overworld traversal. Normal and charge attack isn't going to matter for most of you, unless you plan on using her breakthrough barb shot. And of course, if you plan to see 6 her, then yes, it's a valuable talent. Let's dive into some necessary details. Elemental Burst, Yelon's highest priority in talent investment from C0 to C5, responsible for her damage and Hydra application. Ascension 4 passive, like we mentioned, adds ramping damage increase while her burst is active for up to 15 seconds, 3.5% damage per second to a maximum increase of 50%. Yelon's Hydra application at Constellation 1 and lower is consistent at every 3 hits per 1 second following her burst waves, meaning 1 time per second. Constellation 2 does add an extra burst arrow every other wave which has no internal cooldown and will always apply Hydra to the enemy. This effectively increases her Hydra application from 2 times per 2 seconds at C1 or lower to 3 times per 2 seconds at C2 or higher, a 50% application increase. With a 70 energy cost and an 18 second cooldown, Yelon has the expected cooldown and energy requirement of an off-field burst DPS. Elemental Skill, Yelon's utility ability, responsible for speedy repositioning, energy generation, and one-off Hydra application and a damage proc. Tappy is a quick dash. Full hold E for her to enter a running state. You don't have to hold E the whole time. Exit with another E press or until 3 seconds have gone by. No matter if you tap or hold, Yelon will always generate 4 Hydra orbs on a single E, with a cooldown of 10 seconds, averaging out to 1 every 2.5 seconds. Constellation 1 adds another charge of her elemental skill, increasing her average energy generation and allowing delays of up to 20 seconds for full elemental skill usage efficiency. And while it can reset your breakthrough barb state from the normal charge attack, this is almost never used in a practical rotation. With this multiplier being the highest available from her kit, you will notice her elemental skill able to deal exceptional amounts of damage, especially on a vaporized proc. Normal Charge Attack, Yelon's lowest priority talent for Constellation 0 to Constellation 5, but the highest priority talent for Constellation 6. It's responsible for having her Breakthrough Barb Multiplier, which is only important for C6 users who will be firing 5 of these every burst rotation. Otherwise, her normal attacks are just used as a filler or to activate her own burst arrows. So, talent investment, as we went over, for C0 to C5, burst is more valuable than skill, with the Normal Charge Attack being useless. If you are a C6 Yelon gamer, then this changes to Normal Charge Attack being first, greater than equal to burst, greater than skill. Attack rotation. Really simple. Use your elemental skill once or twice before activating burst. So for constellation 0, this means a tap or hold E into the burst. For constellation 1 or higher, this can mean one of two things. Either you tap or hold E, and then you burst, and then you elemental skill sometime after or in between, or you run both of the E's first, so one tap or hold E, and then a second tap E, not hold, and then into a burst. With Constellation 1, you can use both of her E's before the particles are absorbed by her, but her second E has to be a quick tap or else too much time goes by. For Constellation 0, maximum energy efficiency means that you elemental skill every 10 seconds, which can be kind of annoying as most rotations will just ignore this. This is why Constellation 1 is such a quality of life upgrade. It allows you to double E every 20 seconds following normal team burst rotations without having you worry about her elemental skill cooldown. Weapons. So when building up Yelon, there's three important factors to consider. 
Yellon's a pure HP scaler. That means that there's no conversion in her kit going on like Hu Tao, for example. So Yellon's damage scales only from HP and benefits nothing from attack. Energy recharge up to a point is extremely valuable and her most important stat to consider with her weapon and artifacts. After that, high crit rate and crit damage for obvious damage scaling. So the attack part makes weapons a little bit more unique for her. What is normally the first or second thing you see with this weapon, this base attack value, is utterly worthless for Yellon, which means some weapons that have a really good passive for her, but the secondary is useless, can be left at level 1. So in general, here are the most practical choices that I would recommend. 5 star signature Aqua Simulacra. HP bonus, insane crit damage, and damage percent bonus even if off-field. It's best in slot. What it lacks is energy recharge. Get it from the timepiece and substats. 5 star Elegy for the end. Energy recharge for herself, elemental mastery, and attack percent for the team. It's best in slot for support of Yellon in both Vaporize and Bloom related team comps that don't need Favonius' energy generation. Then we get to 4 star Favonius Warbow. Best in slot, F2P, or budget bow for any type of Yellen build. Energy recharge for herself, passive particles for the team, and it's very easy to build around. So those weapons I would say are the highest recommendations for 99% of the Yellen usage in the game. The rest of the weapons that I'll mention are inferior to those. Other 5 star weapons. Polar Star, Over Skyward Harb, Over Thundering Pulse. They are just crit rate or crit damage stat sticks, with Polar Star granting skill and burst damage too, which is why it's better than the other two. Other 4-star weapons, Moon's Moon and Stringless are the unique weapons that can be R5 and level 1 for full value. Ascending only grants either attack percent or elemental mastery, which she doesn't use for general purposes. The extra elemental mastery is only noticeable when you're intentionally trying to do huge damage with her Vaporize E. Then we have weapons like Fading Twilight, Sacrificial Bow, and Alley Hunter that are okay choices. And then we also have 3-star Recurve Bow, which is an impressive HP choice, but is directly inferior to Favonius in terms of stat distribution, and then doesn't have the passive from Favonius, which generates energy. Lastly, Slingshot, if you want for the high crit rate on a 3-star weapon, most of the time you'll have access to other 4-star or 5-stars. Now for artifacts and stat priority. From C0 to C6, her scaling is built purely upon HP multipliers, which are affected by crit and hydro or general damage bonuses. But before that, energy recharge is the most important stat until you can guarantee her burst off cooldown. Depending on your team's energies and whether you have Constellation 1 or not, your energy recharge needs can vary from the lowest range of 140% all the way to 200%. So we want to prioritize ER to guarantee burst, then focus on a balance between HP and general crit stats on top of maximizing Hydra or general damage bonuses. So then her best 4-piece artifact set is undoubtedly 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate. Even if you're running low recharge Yelon, 4-piece Emblem is her strongest artifact Artifacts set at least 10% stronger than any other two-piece combo due to do its four-piece elemental burst damage off of the recharge. If you are a Constellation 6 Yelon, then four-piece Heart of Depth is a justifiable alternative, which is focused more on her barb shot charge attack damage rather than her burst. However, four-piece emblem is still stronger overall even in this particular case, it's just an alternative. Otherwise, any combination of these two-piece sets will work for general use. They are within small margin of each other. We have two-piece Tenacity for HP, we have two-piece Noblesse for burst, two-piece Heart of Death for Hydro damage, two-piece emblem for recharge. Try your best to move to a decent substat four-piece emblem as soon as you can as the power jump is quite significant. Main stat choices. So even as a standard HP-based DPS, her artifacts will really depend on what weapon you're running and how much recharge you're optimizing around. So for the timepiece, HP over energy recharge. So the better your recharge substats, the more offensive the timepiece can be. So most Aqua Simulacra gamers will have to run energy recharge here. Unless you have really good substats, or you're running double hydro, or your constellation one, or you have any combination of the above. A perfect optimized Yellon will be running an HP timepiece with energy recharge coming from substats. Goblet. Hydro damage percent is more preferable than HP percent. But either a goblet works great, it just depends on how you're running things. If your timepiece is HP percent, then more often the goblet will be hydro. If your timepiece is energy recharge, then goblet is equally HP or hydro, it depends on the team buffs that you have. A perfect optimized Yellon will be running a hydro goblet. Mask. Either crit or HP works. Honestly, there's no better choice than the other. It's really specific to your specific build. Non-crit weapons like Favonius or Elegy will prefer the crit mask. Aqua Simulacra can choose either a crit rate, crit damage, or HP percent mask. A perfect optimized Yellon could be running either one. It really depends on the amount of HP versus crit substats on that build. For the average player though, the most important thing is her energy recharge, and then her other pieces can be whatever you decide, as long as you maintain a relatively good crit ratio and decent HP. Alright, so baseline build with weapons and artifacts is complete, so here's my recommendation of stat thresholds. Yelon has crit rate ascension stat, and with Aqua Simulacra's huge crit damage stat stick, it's pretty easy to get a good crit ratio on Yelon if you're using a crit related weapon. 
So in general, HP, I would recommend between 25,000 to 40,000 HP. And then the energy recharge can be anywhere between 140 to 200%. This is affected by Constellation 1 and Double Hydro. If you're using a crit weapon, then for crit rate, crit damage, I would recommend 80 to 95% here, and then 160 to 250% crit damage. If you're running an HP, energy recharge, or other weapon that's not crit, 75 crit rate, and then 150 crit damage. So these are stat ranges to give variance for different weapons. Mine doesn't really show this, but that's because I am forcibly running a Favonius Warbo here. If I do decide to use a Aqua Simulacra, with Constellation 1, then you'll see that my stats are a lot more in the ballpark of my thresholds. As a reminder, ascending her to 90 is a must because base HP is really important and the crit rate ascension is very valuable. Constellations. So at C0, Yelan is more than capable. She's easy to build, laid back, off build playstyle, and can run really fast when you need her to. However, her constellations definitely add enormous value to her, either allowing less strict stat requirements, improving a gameplay related feature, or just allowing her to blow up enemies herself. In my opinion, there's something for everyone from C0 to C6. C1, elemental skill can hold two charges. It's such a simple constellation, but a large effect to her design. It reduces her energy recharge requirements down to as low as 140%, increases the delay of efficient E usage to 20 seconds instead of 10 seconds, matching her average burst rotation. And she can use this more frequently in overworld to save you time. Constellation 2, every other burst wave, which is the 1.8 second cooldown here, gains an extra burst arrow attack set at a flat 14% HP. This extra burst arrow ignores internal cooldown, so her burst applies Hydro three times in two waves with this constellation instead of two times in two waves. The total burst damage increases by 15 to 30%, which is lower if you have a higher burst talent level since this one is fixed at 14%. C3 and C5 are plus three levels. Constellation 4, HP plus 10 to 40% to the team and herself, depending on how many enemies are hit by her E. Combined with Constellation 1, she can reach 40% by hitting two enemies twice with both her E's. It doesn't have to be all in one E. This is valuable to herself and also other teammates who benefit from more HP, for example, Hu Tao. C6, after she activates her burst, she can fire five barb shots with her left click, which is normal tech. Each of these deals 156% of her talent multiplier. So for me at level eight talent, it would be 156% of 18.52% HP or 28.9% HP. This state lasts for 20 seconds. So you can pop her burst, swap to someone else for like 10 to 15 seconds, for example, Hu Tao, come back to her and fire the five off. They don't have to be immediate, which is nice. It's like saving her shots for later. C6 turns her into a rotational on kill DPS and makes her broken. That's literally it. Though, in general, she's great at C0. Her constellations are great. Her C6 is great. She's just in general great. All right, team comps Yelon, Hydro Burst DPS. Ching Chiu, Hydro Burst DPS. Together, double hydro, kill everything, shared energy, hydro resonance, HP buff, everyone's happy. So prior to Sumeru, this is what team comps surrounding Yelan were built around. Having and using Xingqiu all the time was just more of a reason to get Yelan to stay synergized so well with each other and just end up collectively increasing each other's DPS due to their designs. So double hydro includes a subset of other team comps that utilize this combo. First up, Vaporize plus Double Hydro. Hu Tao or Yoimiya are the most common choices here. Double Hydro guarantees that Hu Tao and Yoimiya are always able to vaporize the hits that are supposed to vaporize. For Hu Tao, that's every charge attack, and for Yoimiya, it's every 1, 4th, and 7th normal attack hit. Last slot is almost always Zhongli, but it can be a Nemo support. Zhongli provides survivability and resistance shred by shield for both Hydro and Pyrez. A Nemo support is mainly to swirl Hydro for Yelan and Qingqiu's damage. Uh, difficult in Double Hydro to swirl Pyro as well. As long as you have followed the energy recommendations, this team is very very unlikely to have energy issues for your off-field supports. Tazera plus Double Hydro. So usually consisting of a Nemo plus Electro plus Double Hydro, this is just a massive pool of Electro Charge reactions and constant damage. A Nemo can be on-field or off-field that consistently swirls. We have Sucrose, Kazua, Heizo, and the recently released Wanderer that fit here. Electro will most likely be Fischl for consistent off-field Electro DPS. Bloom plus Double Hydro, consisting of one Dendro, one Elemental Mastery, Electro or Pyro, plus Double Hydro. This is just consistent Hyper Bloom or Burgeon procs for single target or AoE Dendro damage. Double Hydro offers incredibly consistent Hydro application, and Yelan can choose to be on-field or off-field, depending on whether the Dendro is off-field or on-field. If Yelan is on-field, she'll be normal attacking to proc all the burst DPS, and while this may sound suboptimal, you'd be surprised how effective a full off-field Hyper Bloom comp can be while Yelan is dancing away on-field. For this particular setup, Elemental Mastery Raiden is most optimal due to her elemental skills ability to proc from ranged. 
Nilo, Bloom, plus Double or Triple Hydro. This is just standard Nilo gameplay. On field, Dendro, like Yao Yao, I'll hate them, or Nahida, plus Yelon, plus Nilo, and then Kokomi. This is most optimal now with Yao Yao as the on field Dendro, removing the necessity of Kokomi as another healer, opening up more offensive supports. So, that's Double Hydro. If you don't have Xingqiu, or you need him on the other side of the abyss, you just have Solo Hydro. Yelon works on the exact same team comps that Xingqiu would work on by himself, no change. Standard or Raiden National with Yelon, just replacing Xingqiu. Soup with Cosmo Bennett and an Electro DPS. Utao Yoimiya with Solo Hydro. And then Standard Hyper Bloom version with a Solo Hydro unit. And that concludes an updated full guide for Yelon for patch 3.4. One of my favorite units that I use literally everywhere in for good reason. Off field, on field, any team comp because she's Hydro, she looks great, she can be a Favonius user, she can be DPS, she ties you up, yeah. I'm wishing that all Yellen Wanters be Yellen Havers this rerun. Thanks as always for watching, let me know what you think of her in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Take care.